Hi, uh, and welcome back to an episode of Make Money Count. Feels a little strange starting this one off. We haven't done one now for probably three or four weeks. And the reason is that Matt Scanlon, our producer, has passed away. We were all extremely shocked. It was a big loss to all of us at Connect. Uh, anyone that knew Matt from doing the podcast or from working with him at Connect knew what a big heart he had, what a talented, amazing guy he was. It's just a big loss, and all of us are going to miss him a lot. And we're just kind of regrouping. And we're going to try to make it as good as it was with Matt and try to continue to provide you great content that you enjoy. You know, certainly we're all going to miss Matt and our hearts go out to his family who are dealing with this loss uh, just like we are. I figured today, uh, since we are uh, kind of training our new producer, what I would do is I would kind of talk through some of the things we usually talk about on the show because today the numbers for Canada's unemployment came out and they didn't look great. What we'll do is we'll walk through how today's unemployment numbers are going to affect the Bank of Canada's next rate decision. They won't affect it. Uh, They may affect the one in June. And we're going to show how the unemployment news kind of played out in the marketplace. Okay, so the unemployment rate climbed to 6.1%. Let's put that in perspective for a second here. Over the last 12 months, unemployment rate in Canada has increased by 1%. Typically, when the unemployment rate increases by half a percent, it indicates that we're in a recession. First thing, why don't we put up the chart of the unemployment rate? I pulled this from a great website called Better Dwelling. They have some great articles that they put out Apparently, it's Canada's fastest growing real estate website. This is not a plug. It's just a great spot to read good articles about real estate. Okay, so that is the unemployment rate in Canada since 2017. And you obviously see that gigantic spike there. That's COVID. And then after COVID, kind of people easing back into the workforce. I think some of that is the contraction of the labor supply itself, people leaving the labor supply. But now what's happening is we have more people coming to Canada looking for work. So we have this really strange new economy in Canada almost. And it's very rare to see in any country. Usually people move to a country where there is opportunity. They move to a country where there are jobs, where the economy is robust and growing. Well, in Canada's case, the economy is actually contracting. We have fewer jobs and we have more people coming. It's almost like a grand old hotel that really has this great reputation still. But unfortunately, the hotel is like under new management and the toilets don't work and there's a hole in the roof. And I guess we could kind of run this analogy even further. Because we're not spending money on infrastructure to help Canadians be more productive, we're creating more and more problems for ourselves down the road. So looking at this unemployment chart, it just calls to mind how big of a problem this is, right? So if you look at it, we've actually lost one job for every 26 workers that we added. So we've got all of these people flooding into our economy and the economy is still contracting. Usually when more and more people come into a country, it means you're going to have a boom. It means that things are going to happen in that economy. Unfortunately, our economy is so heavily reliant on housing and construction, which is contracting, that our economy is faltering right now. This is going to cause a problem. And it it already is manifesting itself, right? We're seeing this massive demand for housing while the economy contracts. We're seeing unemployment start to spike. The only thing that the Bank of Canada is going to be able to do is drop interest rates, and that will only further fuel housing prices. So the affordability of a house in Canada isn't going to change anytime soon. The lower interest rates go, the more people that are sitting on the sidelines are going to come in to buy. Why don't we have a look at how the probability of rate cuts in the future have been affected by this unemployment rate? Uh, and that is our good old friend, the TMX Cdoor market. You want to pull that up? Okay, so this is 
uh, and you, the viewer, probably already knows this, but I'm going to say it for the uh, benefit of our brand new producer. This is a market on the TMX that trades in the future probability of Bank of Canada rate movements by pricing money over a temporary basis, basically. And it shows us that the June 2024 meeting of the Bank of Canada, there is an expectation, 86% probability that they will reduce the borrowing rate in Canada by 25 basis points. And in September, 92% that will be at 50 basis points lower. And then December, 94% chance that we're going to be at 75 basis points lower. If you remember our last show, these probabilities have still dropped if you're in this camp of expecting interest rates to decrease, right? The likelihood of the one percentage point of interest rate cuts by the end of 2024, that likelihood is diminishing. If you would have looked at it before the unemployment rate came out today, it was worse, right? It was less likely that we were going to see these rate cuts. The reason for that is that if our unemployment rate issuance was bad, if that report was bad in Canada, it was amazing in the United States. The United States blew out the numbers. 303,000 new jobs. The economy seems to be firing on all cylinders. Joe Biden got in front of a camera and somehow managed to squeak out the words that the economy was back on track. So the United States firing on all cylinders. Canada, not so much. And because that unemployment rate looked so good, bond yields in Canada, which we're going to show you next, started creeping up again. Because obviously Canada is a very small economy in relation to the United States, is greatly affected by the American economy. Our ability to sell products and services into the United States is predicated upon how strong their economy is. So therefore, it is a big tailwind for the Canadian economy when the Americans are doing well. The problem is, our efficiency and effectiveness of selling services and goods into the United States is falling off. And that's because of our ability to make our workers more productive. So if you would have looked at this CDOR TMX projection a week ago, it looked worse. I project that coming in the next few weeks, we're going to see a higher probability of more rate hikes. And again, this is going to swing back and forth over the next two, three months, right? It'll always be moving based on the inputs that it's receiving from the economy. But you can expect a higher probability of more rate hikes to be shown in this CDOR TMX chart going forward. Okay, let's flip now and have a look at the bond yield I was just chatting about. So the bond yield is at 3.617% in Canada, and it is holding steady. I mean, over the last kind of three-month period, as you can see on here, we went from maybe 3.8 at the high. Uh, so we're not far off that high over the last three months. And that isn't great for our spring real estate market because it's going to influence fixed rate mortgages. The one advantage I would say to this is that maybe more people will be discouraged from taking five-year fixed rate mortgages and pushed into a variable rate product. I firmly believe that'll be good for them kind of medium to long term in those five-year terms because we do expect that prime rate to keep coming off. Uh, all this to say, really, I mean, uh, there's one more article that I wouldn't mind referencing. The Financial Post had a great article just talking about how Canadians are really waiting for rate cuts to re-enter the housing market and more and more Canadians are optimistic. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, really. Again, we talked about this a lot in our previous shows. Consumer spending and consumer confidence drive economies. If we have all of this pent-up demand ready and waiting to hit our housing market, the only thing that's going to happen is that housing prices are just going to start climbing higher the moment interest rates even tick down the smallest amount, and then that will delay the Bank of Canada further from action, right? We've built an economy on housing. We're so reliant on housing in Canada. And the only way to get out of this funk is by starting to invest money as a country into things that will make our country more productive. 
If you remember, when we first started getting into this COVID pandemic, we had a comment. I said, the best thing we can be doing right now is investing money in schools, in healthcare, in technology, in small business. We didn't do any of that. We just wasted it. Now, we still need to make those investments because the productivity per unit of labor, per unit of Canadian employee is diminishing. And the amount of money that we are paying employees is increasing. It's causing our inflation. And it will continue to cause our inflation. And it will continue to make us less productive until we can provide things that make our workers more productive and that let us bring more productive and effective people to the country. Anyways, this is our first podcast back. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, Let's see how this one gets edited. And maybe we'll be back next week with another one. Thank you.